All right, guys, in this video, let's go ahead and learn about dependency injection and why it's really important for us developers to use dependency injection when we write applications. If you've never heard about dependency injection, no worries, because I'm going to teach you guys exactly what it is and how you can take advantage to write applications that are easily testable. So let's understand exactly what it is. So perhaps in the past, you've done something like this. You had an email service class, and this class had to use a contact list service. So this contact list service, and it should be a class. And essentially, this contact list service simply provides you know, a list of contacts. So you can see this method right here simply returns a list of contacts. And by the way, you don't have to, you know, type anything because I'm going to provide you guys with this file. And also we're going to use dependency injection with Spring. So this method here, get contacts, simply returns an immutable list of contacts. And then you would say that, for example, this class right here, email, email service, would use the contact list service. So here, for example, we could have a method that we could simply say, um, you know, for example, send and then email. And right here, we would simply say, you know, contact list service dot get and then contacts. And right here, we could say dot for each. And then for each contact, we would simply, you know, say contact list service and then dot send, for example. So, you know, perhaps, uh, just let me use method reference right here. So perhaps we had a send method right here as well. So void and then send, and then you simply pass a contact. And then you would implement, you know, the way that you send your, your email. So, you know, this is, you know, absolutely fine code. But if you look carefully, that's something that we are doing very badly. And what we're doing badly is this guy right here. So this new keyword. So right here, you see that inside of my constructor, I'm instantiating this service, the contact list service, by the way. And, you know, this is not great because if I want to test my application, right, if I want to write a unit test, for example, if I was to create an instance of email service in my test, this would create an instance of the contact of the contact list service. And if the contact list service, I don't know, you know, this get contact would go to, you know, a, you know, DB, for example, to get some data and then retrieve, then we would actually create a real connection to our database, which we actually don't want that. And that's one problem with this code. So perhaps you've heard about Mokito, which allows us to mock objects. With Mokito, we wouldn't necessarily be able to mock this contact list service. Another problem with having this new keyword right here is that we are creating a bunch of objects. So let's say that we had another service. So we could say that we had, you know, a class. So just let me copy this. And instead of this call, called email service, I would say uh, mail and then chimp email service. And, you know, let's say that these are the same, uh, you know, they do the same thing. But often you'll have a, you know, a common interface and then you simply implement that interface. But for now, to be simple, you can see that now I'm creating another instance of the contact list service right here. So I'm creating one here and another one here. And as you see, you know, if we have a bunch of classes, you know, usually in enterprise applications, we have thousands of classes, right? So now if you are creating new instances like this, then you will end up in a lot of trouble. Because one, you're creating a bunch of objects. Second of all, you are creating a bunch of objects. And this means that these are stored in the heap and you not necessarily know when they're going to be garbage collected. And third, these objects, they could actually be singletons. So right here, they're not singletons. I'm using the same class and instantiated multiple times. 
this could be, for example, a singleton, but it's not. And fourth, um, you know, this is very, very difficult to test because we are creating a real object right here. And then, you know, we would, you know, end up with problems where, for example, if this, um, you know, um, this method right here get contacts, you know, would need to connect to a database. But if the database was down, then, you know, we couldn't test that. Or, for example, if you want to test, um, you know, using Jenkins or Team City, then this wouldn't work. So, essentially, what we do is use dependency injection. And what dependency injection is, is simply removing this new keyword all over your classes, right? Because you don't want to create objects like this because of the reasons I've just mentioned. So essentially, we just have to get rid of all of the new keywords, just like so. And then, you know, the name says it all. So dependency, so dependency is the actual, you know, dependency or the actual class that our other class, in this case, email service depends on. And then injection means that we simply inject. And the way that we inject is by using frameworks such as Spring or Juice or even Dagger. So we actually, you know, leave the creation of objects up to those frameworks and we can focus on writing code that we can easily test. So Spring has been around for quite some time now. We also have Juice and we also have Dagger. I think that Juice and Dagger, they are both from Google. And the cool thing about these dependency injection frameworks is that they take care of managing all the objects and allow us to inject the objects wherever necessary. And, you know, there's quite some uh, high level stuff that goes into these dependency injection frameworks that if you were to write yourself, it would be a lot of time consuming and very difficult to manage. So if you want to change you know, your implementation, for example, you know, that could be costly if you have like a large scale application. So with these frameworks, it makes it very, very easy for you to make changes. So let me give you a very quick example of how this works. So remember, I said that we remove the new keyword in every single class that we have. So now how do we actually, you know, get the for example, contact list service injected into this email list service. Now, this is different uh, depending on the actual dependency injection framework. But for example, with Spring, we would simply say that we will inject. So we have to use annotations. So at and then inject. And then what we want to inject is this guy right here. So this guy right here goes there just like so and essentially we do the same as before so I'm going to say this and then dot contact list service equals to contact list service so right here you see that I'm not using the new keyword but instead I'm just saying that this contact list service will be injected with this annotation into my email service. Now, how do we tell, for example, Spring, and by the way, I'm talking about Spring right now, how do we tell Spring to actually instantiate the object that we can use it? Well, that's very simple. So we have to go to our service, so this contact list service, and we can simply say that this is a service. So the class is annotated with at service. And then Spring goes ahead and then it creates this object. And obviously, because Spring is clever enough, this object is created by default as a singleton, which means that if you inject in multiple classes, it will reuse the same instance. And that's a big benefit for us because usually nowadays applications are horizontally scaling. So we don't we don't deal with you know a lot of multi-threading. Um, you know, in today's world. So we have applications that can really scale, uh, you know, by spinning up, you know, a bunch of instances in AWS, for example. So 
in this MailChimp service, we could simply do the same at an end service. And then we get rid of this new keyword and this guy right here. And I'm going to say contact list service. And we also have to pass the contact list service in the constructor. And this is dependency injection. As you saw, it's not that difficult at all as people make it sound. So essentially, it's really you delegating the creation of objects to frameworks such as Spring, Juice, or Dagger. And the benefits are huge as I've mentioned previously. But don't worry because in this course, you're gonna learn how to use dependency injection and also the benefits because we will write integration tests that ensure that our application works and does what we intend to do. This is all for this video. If you have any questions about dependency injection, please let me know and I'll be more than happy to give you more examples. But as I mentioned, we're gonna learn dependency injection throughout this course. This is all for now. Join me on the next one. See ya.